All right. <clears throat> so we've been in phylum chordata, okay? And we've been looking at a bunch of different animals that are in phylum chordata. We looked at the two non-vertebrate chordates, which were tunicates and also lancelets. And then we looked at vertebrates, and we spent three cycles looking at fish, which are one type of vertebrate, right? So the next three cycles, we're going to look at three more types of vertebrates, reptiles, birds, and mammals, okay? We're not going to be looking at amphibians, because like we said before, there are no frogs that live in the ocean. So we have no amphibians that live in the ocean. Um, so characteristics of the rest, these three types of vertebrates, okay? They are going to be what we call tetrapods. So that means that they have four feet or four limbs, okay? Tetra is four, pod is feet, so these are the four-footed or four-limbed animals. And so you can see, like, your sea turtle, okay, it's going to have front two flippers and then back two flippers, okay? And then you've got, like, your birds that are going to have your wings and their feet, okay? And then the seals and sea lions and stuff that will have the four flippers. They also um, breathe air. So all of these types of vertebrates breathe air. So that means that they have to come up to the surface to breathe at some point and breathe in oxygen from the atmosphere. That also means that if you keep them down for long enough, they can drown, right? So um, just like you can drown if you stay underwater too long, so can they. So you can drown a sea turtle, you could drown a penguin, you could drown a whale, okay? They can drown. <coughs> All right, so our first class that we're going to be looking at is class Reptilia, which are reptiles. So they're going to be like turtles, sea snakes, okay, the marine iguana, okay, um, all sorts of different kinds of things. General information about this class, we have scales, okay, and those scales will help to decrease water loss. So just like snakes and stuff that live in the desert, okay, they have, those scales help to hold water into their body. The same thing with reptiles that live in the ocean. They have scales that will hold water in their body because they have less salt in their body than outside, so they tend to lose water, so those scales help to um, prevent water loss. They are also oviparous, okay, which means they lay eggs, all right? So um, all types of reptiles except for sea snakes have to come up onto land to reproduce and lay their eggs. So that's why sea turtles have to crawl back up onto land to lay their eggs. And then you have the little hatchlings that run back to the ocean. Okay, so they all have to um, come back onto land to lay eggs, except for sea snakes. Sea snakes are viviparous, which means that they, um, are, they give live birth, right? So they don't have to come back onto land in order to reproduce. So they can stay in the water all the time. They have special eggs. They're called amniotic eggs. So they, it's what that means is it's basically like a hard outer covering with a bunch of membranes inside and like a yolk that helps to support the, and nourish the baby okay, that's in there. Um, so they do have an amniotic egg. And then those eggs, when they're first laid, the shell of that egg is very leathery, so it's like soft. And then after it's laid a couple days, after a couple days, it'll harden and become more like that hard outer covering is like a chicken egg that you think of, okay? So it's leathery at first, and then it becomes hard, hardened. Um, they're also ectothermic, which means that their body temperature is dependent on the surrounding water temperature. So they cannot maintain their own body temperature. So like Squeegee back here in the back, he's a, he's a reptile, right? He lives in the water. That light, it's Squeegee, yeah. That light, okay, is a heating lamp. Okay, so it's actually like, he doesn't do it when in class because he's scared of you for good reason. Um, and so he sits up on the rock, and you'll see him. He, like, spreads his arms and his little back legs out, and he actually will, like, be soaking up the heat from the heating lamp. So he, um, he has to have that heating lamp, or he, gets, he can't maintain his own body temperature, can't get warm, and he would die. So he does have to have that heating lamp. Um, so because of this, like, sea turtles and stuff, they can't maintain their own body temperature. So they have to live in a place where the water is warm enough for them, right? Which means you typically find marine reptiles in the tropics, right? Where the water is warmer and um, they can survive. But why you don't find, like, turtles in Ar Antarctica, okay? Because it's too cold. All right, and then here's a picture to help you see. They all breathe air. So they all come up to the surface to breathe. All right. Okay, so our first type of marine reptile is the marine iguana. These 
things are cool. Um, these are the only marine lizards. The only ones that you'll find, uh, only lizards that you'll find that spend any part of their life in the ocean. And they're only found in the Galapagos. So the Galapagos Islands are off the coast of Ecuador. So here's South America, okay? And then that little red dot right there, those are where the Galapagos Islands are. Um, and then there's a close-up of them. So they're only found in the Galapagos. And they're called the marine iguana um, because they eat algae and stuff that's in the water. Okay, so they do spend a lot of their life up on land, but one of their main food sources is the algae that's in the water. So they actually will dive into the water, swim out, go down, and eat algae, and then swim back to shore. Okay, so they're going to eat algae in the water. So they're actually more buoyant than like fish. So they actually kind of tend to float a little bit in water. And so in order to prevent them from having to use a lot of energy to like be perpetually swimming down towards the bottom as they're trying to eat, um, they actually eat rock. So they'll eat rocks, like a couple rocks, and swallow them and keep them in their stomach, which reduces their buoyancy. So when they go out to, s to eat, they can just sink down to the bottom more easily and like eat their food. So if, you, if you're a diver, you know, you have like the weight belt, right? That's essentially their weight belt to help them sink down to the bottom. They do use their tail for swimming. Um, they are going to be using uh, the land to, and the rocks to lay on the rocks in order to heat up their bodies. They also, males will also fight for territories on rocks where, um, they, so like the females will be hanging out on a rock and the males will fight for dominance of, on that rock and then if they get dominance then they can mate with all the females in that area. Okay, so yep all of the females in that area. <coughs> so let's watch a short little video on the marine iguana. Because the marine iguana is really cool. So um, the marine iguanas, when they're eating that algae, they're eat swallowing seawater. Um, and that seawater has lots of salt in it, and they need to get rid of that salt. And so they actually have glands in their nose that concentrate the salt and put it like into their snot, basically. And you'll see them, like, they shoot the snot out of their nose. It's very watery and very full of salt. Um, and so if you just watch them, you'll see them. They, like, periodically shoot stuff out of their nose. Yeah, it's, like, very, very salty. So, and that's how they get rid of those excess salts out of their body, and it's weird. So, that's, uh, that's the marine iguana. And they live on different islands of the Galapagos. Some of them are going to be much more bare rock, and then some of them are uh, much lusher islands. So when I was there, we, were, uh, we saw them like nesting on sandy beaches and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. They're pretty awesome. So, here's what they look like, another picture of them. So that's the marine iguana. Okay. Um, sea turtles are our next type of marine lizard. So there are seven species of sea turtles in the world. Six are found in U.S. waters. Um, one of those is found in Australia, and all of them are endangered. Okay, so every single one. So the first type of sea turtle that we have is the loggerhead, or sorry, not the loggerhead, the leatherback. Okay, so this is the leatherback. The leatherback is the largest of the sea turtles. It's called the leatherback because it actually doesn't have the carapace or like the um, shell on its back. So it just has like ridges of bone and then it's got leather-like skin in between those ridges of bone. And you can kind of see the ridges right there. Um, and you can see it compared to the size of a human, right? So it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, the leatherback is also the type of sea turtle that can be found in the coldest types of waters. So they're able to be found in colder waters than the others. This is the hawksbill okay, and the Kemp's Ridley. That's what those look like. Okay. Then we've got our green sea turtle. Okay, the loggerhead. Yeah, they're pretty cool. 
Um, and then the Olive Ridley, and then this is the flat back, which is the only type found in us, the one that's found only in Australia. Okay, so um, those are your seven types of sea turtles. And again, all of them are endangered. So, okay, so sea turtles are cool. Um, and they all start out in the ocean, and they're pretty much herbivores as they start out. Um, but they're going to change their diet as they get older. So what they eat as adults is different from what they eat as babies or hatchlings. So all, all of the types of sea turtles, except for the green sea turtle, are actually going to become carnivores as they get older. And they're going to be eating things like jellyfish, okay, coral, um, toxic sponges. Okay, those are all things that sea turtles can eat. Urchin crabs, lots of stuff. Okay. Um, so they're super, super important to the ecosystem because they're going to be helping to keep jellyfish populations under control. They're going to be helping to keep toxic sponge populations under control. So they are very, very important to the ecosystem for those reasons. Um, the green sea turtle is the only turtle that remains an herbivore as an adult. So um, it actually eats turtle grass and other types of seagrasses, but a lot of turtle grass. Um, and it eats so much of it that its fat and its body actually turns green, which is how it gets its name, the green sea turtle, okay? Because uh, it eats so much sea grass and algae and stuff. And it can survive, so green sea turtles can survive on meat in captivity, but that's not what it eats in the wild. Um, so here's pictures of sea turtles eating different things. So here's a loggerhead eating a little piece of lobster, hawksbill eating coral, and then a green sea turtle eating sea grass. So you can see the difference there. And they do have sharp beaks, particularly if they're going to be eating like lobster and coral and like biting, even biting through jellyfish, you need a sharp beak to make like a clean cut, right? So they're going to have very, very sharp beaks to do that. Um, <coughs> their reproduction. So you have boy sea turtles and you have girl sea turtles. And they are going to mate in the water. Okay, so mating will happen in the water. And the males will stay in the water, but after mating, females will crawl up onto land to lay their eggs. Because okay, they're oviparous, they have to return to land. So they crawl up onto land to lay their eggs, um, and they will use their flippers to dig a hole or a nest in the beach. Okay, and then after they've dug that little nest, they'll lay their eggs in there, anywhere between 80 and 150 eggs, depending on the species. Um, and then they'll use their flippers to cover that nest back up and crawl back into the water. Okay. Um, females and males may mate several times during a breeding season. So the mom may, you know, crawl up, lay some eggs, and then go back to the water, mate again, and then crawl back up. Okay, and may do that several times throughout the breeding season. Um, you get certain types of, of sea turtles, well, sea turtles that will actually all crawl up on the beach together. So the females will crawl up on the beach together to lay their eggs all at the same time uh, at, for protection for predators for them. Um, and also for their babies, and I'll explain that in a second. But what's kind of interesting is that sea turtle babies' genders are not predetermined. So in humans, right, you get egg meat sperm, and you're either XY and you're a boy, or you're XX and you're a girl, and your gender's already there for you, okay? Um, turtles are not like that. The temperature of the nest actually determines the turtle's gender, which is strange. So if it's warm in that nest, above 30 degrees Celsius, those turtle eggs will become female. Um, if it's cold in that nest, below 30 degrees Celsius, those eggs will become male. Okay, so the temperature of the nest will actually determine the gender of the babies. Just is weird to, for us to think about. Um, it's not going to be like, you know, the, the whole nest may not be the same temperature. So you may not have like a whole nest full of females because um, eggs that are closer to the surface are probably going to be warmer than those that are down deeper in the sand, right? So you're going to have, um, you can have different genders within the same nest. It just depends on the nest. Uh, that also means that if, you know, global warming is true and temperatures are rising, then um, you get fewer and fewer males that are born, right, as the nests become warmer and warmer, which will make conservation of these animals even harder, right, because there will be fewer males to breed. So it can be, that can be bad. Okay, so all of these little 
eggs are laid at the same time, um, and then the little babies all hatch at the same time. Okay, so they all hatch at the same time, and they all climb out of the nest together. They actually help each other dig out of the nest. Um, and then they make a run for it towards the ocean. Okay. Uh, and what they do is when they get out of the w out of the nest, historically they like they get out and they look and they're like, where's the brightest light? And they see the brightest light and that's where they head towards. Because in the past, the brightest light has been the moon over the ocean, right? Because everything else is dark because it's like tropical beaches, no development, right? So it should be the moon over the water would be the brightest light. And so they travel towards that, which is the ocean. Um, but nowadays, we get like lots of developments around um, tr those tropical beaches, because they're nice warm beaches that people like to go to. And so they see these bright lights that are like porch lights or street lights, and they crawl away from the ocean rather than towards the ocean. So it's a, a, a problem. We'll talk a little bit more about that too. But all of these guys hatch at the same time, and they all make a break for it at the same time towards the ocean. Um, and they do that because um, they're, what they're try trying to do is overwhelm predators with their sheer numbers of them. So there's so many of them that the predators can't get all of them, so that some of them survive and make it to the ocean. So they, that's why they all hatch at once and like go at once. So hopefully they all, some of them make it. <coughs> okay, so dangers to turtles. How did, how did all seven species of these get to be endangered? Uh, there's a lot of reasons. Turtles are in danger pretty much at every stage of their life. Uh, one of the main reasons for turtle, turtles being endangered is that they're losing a lot of their habitat. So um, these tropical beaches that they nest on, they're beautiful tropical beaches that, I mean, all of us want to go to and lay on and like relax at and have vacation at, right? And so um, there's been r hotels, resorts that have popped up around these tropical beaches, and now turtles don't have a place to nest and to reproduce. So it's a problem. And also, as we've developed, it's caused like erosion of beaches so that, they, again, the beaches aren't good for them for nesting. Um, as, and also, as you like are, you develop around those beaches, even if you don't develop the beaches directly, um, more people are going to the beach, right, from the stuff that you've built around. And so the nests are more likely to be disturbed. So it's, it's no in situation for them. There are, like, they're trying to put new laws into place to protect beaches that have turtle um, nesting, turtle nesting sites. And you'll see they'll put stuff up around turtle nests to try and protect them. But I mean, like, do you see how busy this beach is? And there's like one little turtle nest here. Like, the likelihood that, that those turtles are like not going to get stepped on or disturbed in some way is very low, right? Or like here, so this is a turtle nest that they've put up, you know, a barrier around. And then those yellow signs that are on there are those signs. It's obvious. When, because you can see the like the track from the mom like pulling herself up on shore, right? Because they can't just like walk up on shore like that. They actually have to drag themselves up, and so you can see like this line, and then you can see where the sand was disturbed, and then the line going back. So it's obvious where they are. Um, so then they put stuff around it to try and protect it, but it's it's still hard. So. All right, the other danger, we've kind of briefly talked about this, but this is um, the bright lights. So these are a danger to the turtle hatchlings. So street lights and porch lights and stuff will confuse hatchlings and they'll head in the wrong direction, um, away from the ocean. And if they don't make it to the ocean, then they don't survive, right? Especially if it's a street light, right? And they get up onto the street and then they get run over by cars. It's not good. So um, if they move away from the ocean, they die. So the fix for this danger is simply public awareness. So if the public's aware, um, and then you know they also have like zoning things where if you live in certain areas, you have to dim your street lights at certain times of the year, so that um, the turtles go in the right direction and not towards the street light. So there's lots of different places that have this, but in the U.S., um, Florida in particular, and so there's a bunch of different um, counties and stuff that have laws that require dimming of streetlights at certain times of the year. All right, 
Okay, <clears throat> turtles are also hunted for food at pretty much every stage of their life. So in, when they're eggs, when they're hatchlings, when they're adults, they are hunted for food. They're hunted for food as adults by humans, also by sharks like tiger sharks. Tiger sharks' teeth are specially designed to cut through turtle shells. So, I mean, sugar tart. Tiger sharks' teeth are um, are crazy good at cutting through turtle shells. So you don't want to get bit by a tiger shark because those things are gnarly. Um, also, killer whales can eat turtles. Um, adult turtles, egg predators. So people eat eggs, turtle eggs. There's also so all kinds of birds, rats, ants, raccoons, anything. Yeah, ants like getting into the nest and getting through the eggshell and eating the egg. Okay, so ants can eat them crabs, everything. And then the hatchlings, when they hatch, birds, fish, raccoons, crabs again, and then in the water, like bigger fish, sharks, and stuff will eat the hatchlings once they get to the water. Basically, about 90% of the hatchlings die uh, because they get eaten. So only 10% make it. Um, you also get, so fixes for this, uh, people try and put like fences around the nest to protect the nest from non-human predators like raccoons and rats and stuff like that to prevent them from getting into the eggs. Uh, but for humans, really, we need to create economic alternatives to like eating turtle eggs and stuff, or like figure out a way that um, you know that they can raise chickens and eat the chicken eggs rather than the turtle eggs. All right, or you know if you make it. If you make the public aware of what's going on and then you make it not cool to eat turtle eggs, then that helps as well. All right, another danger to turtles is shrimp fishermen. So shrimp share the same habitat as the green sea turtles. Shrimp like to live in turtle or in seagrass beds. And so people like to eat shrimp. Okay? People like to eat shrimp a lot. Shrimp are delicious. Um, and so they, the, the shrimp fishermen, historically what they would do, would they would take that net, that big net, that, and they'd just drag it behind the boat for like a couple hours, okay, back and forth over these turtle or seagrass beds. Um, turtles breathe air. They can really only hold their breath for about 45 minutes. And so these turtles were getting swept into these nets and then essentially held underwater, right? And so tons of turtles were drowning um, because of these shrimp fishermen. So um, it, it was horrible. They were killing so many turtles. It was amazing that the green sea turtle is not actually extinct. Um, but they came up with a fix for this called the turtle exclusion device, the TED. Okay. Um, what it is is it's a trap door in the net. So here's the net, okay, and then they put this grate in the net, um, and as they drag, this net behind the boat, the, sh the shrimp are small enough to fit through the holes in this grate and they go back to the back and they are caught. And so the shrimp fishermen are happy because they get the shrimp that they need. Whereas the turtles, when the turtles get into this net, they hit this grate and they're like, what do I do? I can't fit through here. And see how it's slanted? Okay, it's slanted up towards the top. Um, and at the top, there's like a little trap door there that the turtles can climb out of and get out and they survive. So everybody's happy because the shrimp fishermen get their shrimp and the conservationists are happy because the turtles survive and it's actually greatly reduced the numbers of turtles that have died from shrimp fishermen. Pretty cool. Um, and so here's an actual picture of the sea turtle getting out of the net right there. And then last danger to turtles are plastics, particularly plastic bags and plastic balloons. Um, sea turtles eat jellyfish. When plastic bags and plastic balloons get into the water, they look a lot like jellyfish to sea turtles. And so they eat the plastic. Even if they just like take one bite and then swallow that and realize like it's not food, they've taken a bite and swallowed the plastic. Uh, and so what happens is they eat this plastic and their stomach, they can't digest that plastic. So their stomach fills up with this plastic and they can't eat because their stomach is full um, of stuff that they can't digest. And so they starve to death with stomach full of, pl stomach full of plastic. So it's, um, it's pretty sad, actually. So fixes for this um, is to reduce
reduce the number of plastic bags that you use. So use a reusable shopping bag, right? If you do get the plastic shopping bags, recycle them. Uh, at a lot of grocery stores now, they actually have uh, like places where you can put your used shopping bags, like plastic bags in, and they'll recycle them for you. Um, or if you see plastic trash, pick it up right, and throw it away. Everything that's on the streets get wash, gets washed into the ocean. So pick it up, throw it away, recycle it if you can. 